everybody welcome to Ndanda's world this is gracious here aka Ndanda she is a nurse that migrated into Germany a couple of years ago straight from Zimbabwe and this channel serves to look into the interests of people who are willing to migrate into Germany and come to practice their nursing here particularly African nurses who are still on the journey of deciding as to whether they want to come to Germany and practice as nurses or people who are already in Germany but new and and are still trying to maneuver and find ways of going about this nursing world in Germany. Well, guys, I would love to thank you so much. Like, I'm really out of words. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Even if I was away, even if I wasn't uploading content the way that I am supposed to, like regularly, but you kept at it. Thank you so much. I've got only one word for you. Wow, you wowed me, you guys. So, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, why not? If you are innocent and willing to like come to Germany, you haven't subscribed, why not? Subscribe, it's totally for free. And tell a friend to tell a friend that we are equipping each other, growing this world together. And without much further ado, you guys, let's dive into the theme of this video. So, Today we're actually looking at the post-basic courses as nurses, right? Post-basic courses that you are bound to meet in Germany, post-basic courses that you are bound to look into when you want to, you know, move further levels. Guys, I know nurses, nurses don't want to stay as bedside nurses, never. Like, there is this excitement after being like, you know, a qualified nurse, you go like, man, I'm now an RGN, man, I have now qualified, and after a while, no, no. <laughs> if you don't have another additional badge to eat, no, it doesn't sound like it. So I know how you feel, you guys. Who wants to remain a bedside nursing? Me, never. Okay, you guys. First of all, you can be a nurse tutor. Yes, you can be uh, like busy with student nurses at school, the school of nursing, teaching them the theory, anatomy, physiology, the nursing science and art, the theory part of it marking their theory work exactly unfortunately guys i don't know how long it takes for you to qualify as a nurse tutor that is the disadvantage maybe mm -hmm, at the moment because things are changing the way the um, three-year course is being undertaken is not the way it was undertook in the past years they are now reconciling other curriculums and um actually trying to come up with a new structure of a syllabus for the nurse training in Germany. So guys, if ever I get the actual and updated information, definitely I'm going to get back to you. So nurse tutor, if you see me looking down, guys, I prepared notes so that I don't skip important points, okay? You can be a diabetics nurse. You'll be looking at patients, not particularly the ones that are admitted in the diabetic ward, but in a hospital in general, in different departments, if there's a patient that came in with uh, diabetes and they don't know how to go about the regimen as to what the patient is supposed to be getting in terms of the oral anti-diabetics or the injections subcutaneously, are they supposed to be getting the long-term or the short-term uh, medication? or you know based on the way the patient is progressing you'll be responsible for that and this post basic can be done in conjunction with dietics because apart from giving them information on how they can take their anti-diabetics you need to also give them information on how their diet should be that's one of an interesting post basic there you guys you can meet what unfortunately it's not going to be maybe just a post basic you visit maybe a school of midwifery uh do it maybe for one year or a couple of months i think it should be a year and some year and six months or so it was like that earlier but unfortunately they've changed it in germany you have to go to university for three years and undertake it as a degree other than that you cannot be a midwife in germany guys i will talk about this into depth because i have seen some advantages and disadvantages of midwives in germany particularly concerning their insurance you see i don't want to talk about it now because I have interesting post basic for you here. You can look into psychiatry. Of course, people love psychiatry, but you know what? They are like, oh no, we don't want to go into psychiatry because most of the times we'll be always talking with patients, talking to patients, 
just trying to see how they think, just trying to see how they maneuver their way of thinking. And people are saying psychiatry is hard, mental health is hard because patients tend to understand their disease more than you. So it can be really controversial, you guys, but I for one think it's a very interesting course basic because many people don't want their dread going there due to the factor that I've just mentioned. So many people who are there have got a chance of, you know, sorry, upgrading themselves and going into a higher notch. You know, that's one of an interesting one. You look at oncology, where I'm working right now, I work in, uh, in an oncology ward that is basically um, work that has to do with cancer patients. You know, your, 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 your main point there is to administer chemotherapy, you'll be accompanying patients to radiation chemotherapy, and you have to adhere to the plan that the oncologist gives to you, right? Or maybe it comes to, uh, what can I say, giving intravenous chemotherapies and, um, you know, giving them that mental uh, support that they need because patient, patients with cancer, you know, they are looking at the end stage of their life. They'll be like, oh man, sister, I'm dying. Am I going to die? I'm losing my hair. You know, that kind of a thing. They are very critical patients. Cancer patients can be very hard to deal with. So if you are that person who is not willing to see a person signing their will to say, if I'm not going to make it, please let me be more into oncology because you'll be always attached because you, 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 you will actually witness the person coming with Afro after chemotherapy, two sessions, their hair is, you know, I don't know, this, it has disappeared. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's also one, but it's a little bit complicated because of uh, this, you know, the medication been blasting, been christing, <laughs> you know, uh, the words can be really hard and there's a lot of calculations to do mathematics with oncology, yeah, you can be a wound expert, we expect you to work in a dermatology ward, but we expect you also when we have a complicated situation or a case that comes into our ward, then we can say, hey, come and check this decubitus out. Will you want to manage it? Would you love to look into it? Would you love to, you know, nurse it? Would you love to recommend the uh, material that we can use in taking care of this wound? That would be your department wound manager or wound expert that is also quite interesting actually you can also be a chest pain unit nurse that one is in conjunction with cardiology because we're looking at patients who will be you know the whole time with monitors telemetry and i can say it's more of a small you know, like intensive care unit because you'll be always running, sometimes resuscitating. And if you are going to be working in a chest pain unit, expect to just have a short contact, short time with your patients because they come today, tomorrow they will have left. They come today, tomorrow they will leave. They come now, like you don't have the relationship that you can build with your patient. It's just in and out. Patients coming in, patients come, come out. Like in an intermediate care ward, that's chest pain unit, looking at angina pectoris, what kind of chest pain do they have? What kind of thoracic complaints are they coming in with? Man, I was there, shall I say, it was hectic. Okay, more power to you chest pain unit nurses. We come to stroke unit nurses who will be coming into a department whereby we deal with patients with stroke, patients with a cerebrovascular accident. You have to look into them, deal with the different stages of the stroke and actually try to help them communicate, try to develop tactics on how you can help them to talk because sometimes when someone gets a stroke, like half of their body, they'll be trying to talk but the words won't be coming out. Like they're having problems with word finding disturbances. You have to deal with that. And definitely you'll be washing them, you'll be giving them baths because hey, they're paralyzed. Okay, <laughs> be ready for that. One of my favorite, you can be a pain nurse, my god. You guys, if you want to be a pain nurse, it's also advisable for you to do palliative care, right? 
palliative care is also a post basic so you can do pain nursing looking at the analgetics looking at the uh, you know the pain scale on a scale of zero to ten how strong is your pain and looking at different ways of dealing with patients pre-operatively post-operatively perioperatively man you are involved in the pain management you are involved you work hand in hand with the anesthetist in looking at the pain how the patient can go about the pain that is one of the most interesting one of the most powerful less talked about but man with so much impact I love pain management. Hey, I love pain management. Guys, I'm getting excited. Okay. You can be an infectious disease nurse. That is to say, you are working hand in hand with the hygiene department. So, whatever new uh, developments are there in the system, you have to be the one who goes around updating people concerning, say for example, a new disinfection, you know, a new disinfection that has to be used within a specific time under specific conditions you have to be the one that goes from what to what explaining what kind of um, uh, you know um, effect that disinfection has got and you have to look at the hygiene definitely how the words do their hygiene like how they give injections are they practicing the non-touch technique at all oh man they're like that we did at school in the world never we're not doing it like guys i mean they'll just walk into the world without you noticing and they'll be like is this the injection pack that you have prepared for this patient are you sure when are you intending to give this injection have you already reconstituted this antibiotic now when do you want to administer it okay now you're trying to think what you have to say <laughs> don't ever don't ever so try by all means to stay whatever you learned at school transfer it into the practical that's the way it's supposed to be you guys and if there's a breakout of any infectious disease, they are the ones to let you know, they are the ones to feed the internet of the institution to say, hey guys, heads up, there is a new virus coming in, or hey guys, heads up, we need to be vaccinated against influenza once a year because of such and such and such reasons, which I find also interesting. You can be a research nurse. Yes, you'll be staying uh, behind the computer, researching the statistics. How many diseases uh, under oncology have we uh, admitted in a hospital this year? What was the success? What was the prognosis exactly? What was the prognosis of the patients that came in presenting with such and such a disease at such and such a time of the year? Guys, and also I've been doing homeschooling, my God, it has been a lot, I don't want to lie to you. Yes, I'm also undertaking a post basic as a clinical instructor, basically I will be responsible for um, new people who come in to the hospital to work in different departments. I'll be the one to show them the geographies of the world and the standards expect standards and station or what standards i expect them to know how to carry out the nursing science and art all together and i expect them to know how to you know uh, use their critical thinking in solving problems because us as nurses we don't work on the theory all the time but we are situative and depending on the situation that's how we decide how to go about it so i'm probing people marking their examinations practically marking their examinations theoretically hey guys i can say for this past week when i was home it was a little bit challenging studying at home reading at home attending lessons on skype it has been a challenge right now i'm working on my portfolio or a thesis that i have to hand in to my teachers to my you know the ones that are responsible for marking my thesis for marking my portfolio so that they can see what i have to present and whatever i write guys i have to be in a position to take some information concerning whatever I have learned and transfer that 
ability and that capability to my student nurses and to new workers who come into the hospital i'm responsible for orienting them i'm responsible for allocating students for their second month i'll be responsible you guys for their critical thinking in using their nursing science and art i'll be responsible for propping them to have that critical thinking to carry out nursing the best way possible Florence Nightingale. <laughs> okay, <laughs> guys, um, I think I'll stop it here. Whenever you want maybe questions to ask, you know, just put them in the comment section below. And if you feel like I left something out, please feel free to do so. There is no wrong question. There is no right question. We can, like I said, it's an educative channel. We're here to prop each other, to equip each other, to, you know, bring each other up in as much as we can. And without further ado, it's time for me to love and to live. Don't forget to subscribe. It's for free.